morning and excuse me welcome to the december 22nd reading from the series today we look at verse 7 of luke chapter 2 but we read luke 2 1 to 7 Chapter 2, verses 1 to 7. And it, and it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Now, and that is the title the subject no room in the inn and verse 7 in this version and she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn royal writes let us notice the manner in which christ was born he was not born under the roof of his mother's house, but in a strange place and at an inn. Well, near, at the back of an inn. When born, he was not laid in a carefully prepared cradle. He was laid in a manger, because there was no room in the inn. The manger was, of course, likely a place where they kept food one of those troughs for food for the cows and sheep we see here the grace and condescension of christ had he come to save mankind with royal majesty surrounded by his father's angels it would have been an act of undeserved mercy had he chosen to dwell in a palace with power and great authority we should have had reason enough to wonder but to become poor as the very poorest of mankind, and lowly as the very lowliest, this is a love that passes knowledge. It is unspeakable and unsearchable. Never let us forget that through this humiliation, Jesus has purchased for us a title to glory. Through his life of suffering, as well as his death, he has obtained eternal redemption for us. All through his life, he was poor for our sakes, from the hour of his birth to the hour of his death. And through his poverty, we are made rich. 2 Corinthians 8 verse 9 Let us beware of despising the poor because of their poverty. Their condition is one which the Son of God has sanctified and honoured by taking it voluntarily on himself. God does not show partiality. He looks at the hearts of men and women, and not at their incomes. Let us never be ashamed of the cross of poverty if God thinks fit to lay it upon us. To be godless and covetous is disgraceful, but it is no disgrace to be poor. A humble dwelling place, coarse food, and a hard bed are not pleasing to flesh and blood, 
but they are what the Lord Jesus himself willingly accepted from the day of his entrance into the world. Wealth ruins far more souls than poverty. When the love of money begins to creep over us, let us think of the manger at Bethlehem, and of him who was laid in it. Such thoughts may deliver us from much harm. And that's a very interesting thought. And the collect for the fourth Sunday in Advent. O Lord, raise up, we pray thee, thy power, and come among us, and with great might succour us that whereas through our sins and wickedness we are sore let and hindered in running the race that is set before us, thy bountiful grace and mercy may speedily help and deliver us. Through the satisfaction of thy Son, our Lord, to whom of thee and the Holy Ghost be honour and glory, world without end. Amen. And the prayer here. Royal King, Son of God, Saviour of the world, who became as poor as the very poorest, who became lowly as the very lowliest. I, we, confess that I, we, am, are easily tempted by the lure of money, I can definitely say that, and possessions, and have often envious of others, definitely. Remind me, us, today, of where my and our real treasure lies, that it lies in thy love, that is, that is beyond understanding. It is unspeakable and unsearchable. From the hour of thy birth to the hour of thy death, thou wast poor for mine and our sakes. With my and our hearts and souls, I, we, give thee, Thanks and praise. Amen. And tomorrow we read Luke 2, 8 to 14, and we look at eight, verses 8 to 11. So, Luke, so, 20. Thursday the 22nd of December, 2 Corinthians 1, the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians, one three to 11. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforteth us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble, <coughs> by the comfort wherewith <coughs> we ourselves are comforted of God. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also aboundeth by Christ. And whether we are afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effectual in the enduring of the same sufferings which we also suffer. Or whether we be comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. And our hope of you is steadfast, knowing that as ye are partakers of the sufferings, so shall ye be also of the consolation. For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure, above strength, insomuch that we despaired even of life. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God which raised the dead, who delivered us from so great a death, and doth deliver, in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. Ye also helping together by prayer for us, that for the gift bestowed upon us by the means of many persons, thanks may be given by many on our behalf. The verse, the verses, we need to look at a three and four. In this version, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, 
comforts us in all our troubles. Bend in Loam by Bend in Low by Anne Ketas. I think that's how it's pronounced. A young mum followed behind her daughter who pedalled her tiny bike as fast as her little legs could go. But picking up more speed than she wanted, the little girl suddenly rolled off the bike and cried that her ankle hurt. Her mum quietly got down on her knees, bent down low, and kissed it to make the pain go away. And it worked. The little girl jumped up, climbed back on her bike and pedalled on. Don't you wish all our pains could go away that easily? The Apostle Paul experienced the comfort of God in his continual struggles, yet kept going. He listed some of those trials in 2 Corinthians 11, verses 23 to 29. Floggings, beatings, sleep deprivation, hunger, concerns for all the churches. He learned intimately that God is the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, chapter 1, verse 3. Or as another version translated, the NIRV, I believe that's the New International Revised Version of 2011. He is the Father who gives tender love. Which sounds better. Much like a mum comforting her child, God bends down low to tenderly care for us in our pain. God's loving ways of comforting us are many and varied. He may give us a scripture verse that encourages us to continue on, or he may have someone send a special note or prompt a friend to give us a call that touches our spirit. While the struggle may not go away, because God bends down low to help us, we can get up and pedal on. So a couple of questions. In what ways has God comforted you? And how can you be a comfort to others because of that? Father of compassion, come near to me and us. Hold me and us in thy arms, thine arms, where I, we, can find rest and encouragement. So if you're doing your Bible in the year, it's Micah 6 and 7 and Revelation 13. And next, tomorrow... Psalm 71, 15 to 24. So, only three more to go. May God bless you and keep you.